back of my kayak, you can see the mount I made for my GoPro camera, which is also a floating tripod. We just pulled in on the beach and pulled our kayaks up on the beach. There you go, there. In the back compartment, underneath my spare paddle that I also bring along, is all the uh, shelter and cooking supplies. The uh, spare paddle is also the uh, poles for my tarp. Fishing tackle, and fishing license, fishing pole, collapsible fishing pole, Peterson Field Guide for seashores, fillet knife and catch a guess I, in case I actually catch something, <clears throat> my tarp, and a nylon stuff sack, my mess kit, and its contents are shown here for you. Hot pan, mug, a lid that fits both, cooking oil, two sports, P38 can opener, soap, scrubber, and a, a camp towel. My stove kit, which actually includes two stoves, two bottles of fuel, fire starter, a windscreen. I wrap the windscreen around one of the bottles and use that hair tie to hold it on the bottle, and they all go in the purple stuff sack. sit on and or lay on underneath the tarp. It's a tarp. Stakes and poles for the tarp. And the long plastic ones are for sand, which we're camping on tonight. Flashlight, lighter, candle, a lantern, and a uh, tea light candle. And the black bag. Ground cloth for my tent. Two food bags. A fire starter. I need the fire starter for starting damp wood on the beach. Two food bags. One's ready to eat food and snacks, and the other one needs prepping and or cooking. I bring Crocs for around the camp and get my wet shoes off. And then, of course, there's the tent. That's everything that's in the back compartment. I need to set up my tent and tarp now. So I put this other stuff I'm not using back in the rear compartment. In the middle compartment, right after the cockpit, I've turned it into a cooler. I've lined it with one of those foam sleeping mats. And, of course, we've filled it to the gills with drinks and ice. Frozen two-liter bottles of ice. My life jacket with a GPS in it. And in the zippered pocket, I carry a flare kit, a headlamp, a lighter, and, of course, a safety whistle. And on the pull tab of the zipper, I have a another compass. Behind the seat I carry my spray skirt and underneath the spray skirt I carry safety rope with two hooks on each end in a bag with a hook on it. Draw sack. A sack with a drawstring top on it. Rather. A camera case and extra batteries. Sponge. Retractable saw. A headband for my Pro GoPro camera. And at my feet, connected to this world here, is an emergency bag full of emergency gear from a coat, first aid kit, marker tape, duct tape, spare light, spare batteries, uh, signal mirror. I got a lighter and magnesium. I got bug repellent and uh, sunscreen in there. Sun protection hat, chart, maps. Tarp's a good idea on a beach site because you need sun protection. You need something to get in and out over the sun under. And also, it rains periodically in the Florida, quickly and unusually. And you need nice long 
yellow stakes for the sand. Anything shorter will pull out. You have to have long stakes. Long, big, long plastic stakes work best. They don't rust. And they're lightweight. They're 12 inch. I actually found this tarp on the beach one time. It was one of those fold up stands that they usually set sail stands under you know, four legs and a peaked pyramid point on the top. Sewing some loops on each corner on the top center. It's become very handy for a beach tarp. You can't just crawl in your tent to get out of the sun. It's usually too hot to fit in the tent during the day. So the tarp is nice and open. Makes great sun protection. Not to mention rain. These are little figure eight uh, or figure nine ties that I've discovered. And very nice, as you'll see here in a moment. They make it real easy to tie off the tarp with. No knotting or anything. You can use the spare paddle as the corner post for the tarp. One's a little bit longer than the other, so I put the Shorter one towards the wind or in the wind, whichever one I favor. You see the figure nine half your tie in line. And you see how quick this makes it to tie up. The further out you put it, the less mechanical advantage the rope has in pulling out the stake. So try to put that as far as you can. Watch this little night eyes figure nine. You simply wrap it around the one and then the other. It's tied, secure. I'm done. <laughs> I'm sold on them. I got one on each line on each corner of the tarp. This tarp actually has a peak to it, in which I put a pole in the center and gives us some headroom inside. The pole is actually from an old pup tent that had two three-foot poles, and I've got four of the sections, making a four-foot pole to put in the middle. Now, and this mat's really great too. It's a folding mat. I got this at Bass Pro Shop. It's like made out of us, like plastic straws flattened out and weaved together. You need something to sit on besides the sand, something to s to work on, so you don't have sand on you all the time. I'll put some electrical tape around each of the joints here to help hold them together so they don't fall apart. And what we used was the bottom. I put a snap, and I put a snap in the center of the tarp, so it literally snaps to the tarp. And then the point that used to go on the top of the pup tent. I stab it in the ground. Boom. The tarp is up. I have a shelter. I actually slipped my blue kayak behind that mat and the base of the tarp. Because the cooler is in the blue kayak and I'll soon be having my seats there on that mat. And then right behind us will be the cooler behind our seats. Now I make my tent. Right, set up the tent. winds coming from behind me. So I'm going to set up the tent with the door slightly towards the wind. Why towards the wind? Well, the bugs like to hang out on the leeward side of the tent where the wind isn't. So you want to have the door in the wind where the bugs aren't. That's the fire starter. I use a Tyvek ground sheet. It's very durable. It's very lightweight. 
I also purposely cut this larger than the tent to give me an area to work on and set stuff on that doesn't require me putting everything in the sand, making everything sandy. You simply tuck in the excess later on so the rain doesn't run under your tent. And look, it gives you a nice area to set the poles, the stakes, and everything else that isn't sandy. So kind of a work area. Simply set the tent up at the corner. At the edge of a uh, tarp, rather. And I bought some extra long stakes for the tent as well to help secure it in the loose sand. These are the new triangle tent stakes they have out now. It's you know, three sided, kind of like Mercedes Star without the circle. for the poles. Take the rain fly off and set it on the extra ground sheet that keeps it from getting all sandy. Sand makes a unique area to camp with and there's some unique problems caused by the sand needing longer tent stakes and a place to set up on. Unless you don't mind sand all over and into everything. Even with all these precautions, it's, it's, you'll still end up with sand inside your sleeping bag. <laughs> this is a no seam netting tent. It's basically all netting other than the rain fly. And the door area. I'm going to try to sleep without the rain fly. But I go ahead and set it up with the rain fly, and then later on, if I don't need it, I simply unbuckle two and pull it to the one side of the tent. And if I have to jump out in the middle of the night, I can pull up over and buckle the two other sides. We got this tent at uh, Bass Pro Shop. It was only like $60. Outside the front door. Now I'm going to tuck in the extra ground cloth into the tent so it doesn't act like a rain gutter. Dragging all the rain under your, uh, draining all the rain under your tent. In the front compartment is all my dry gear, my phone and phone case, and the yellow durable dry bag. Uh, here's my toilet paper. I bring paper towels too because in a wet environment, toilet paper doesn't tend to work very well. In the yellow durable bag, I put my sleeping bag. This is one of those thicker dry bags. It's heavier, but you want your sleeping bag to absolutely be dry at all times. I carry a frog tog rain suit for several different reasons. It's a mosquito cover, it's a wind cover, it's a rain cover. I can sleep in this thing as a sleeping bag almost. It's like an emergency item. I carry it with me all the time. This is a Thermarest folding camp chair. This is a Everglades camping permit. Second bag is my dry food, my uh, dry clothes. Here's my Thermarest sleep self-inflating sleeping mat. Way up in the front is my Thermarest packable camp pillow. I can't sleep without a pillow. So all this dry stuff 
goes in the tent that I now I've set up. The toilet paper, the two green bags are the gear I wear, the orange bag is my pillow, and the yellow bag is my sleeping bag, and the blue one's the toilet paper. The toilet paper goes by the door in case I have to make a midnight trip out. And then the sleeping mat and folding chair stay outside for a little while because I make a chair out of them. Now, Everglades requires you to tie your camping permit to be visible from outside. I guess the rangers randomly make checks of the campsites to make sure nobody else is staying there that isn't supposed to be. This is my newest uh, sleeping mat self-inflating sleeping pad. It's the extra wide 25 inch one and extra long 76 inches. And it's the thin one and the ultra light version. Which means it generally doesn't tend to inflate too well by itself and you have to inflate it unless you get lots of patience. So I pull it out first and then unpack my folding chair. This is a neat not having any camp chairs, and generally most camp chairs won't pack in a kayak because of their length. This makes a chair with a seat back, and I've really come to love this thing. It's relatively easy to set up, as you will see. inflated now or nearly fully inflated. So you slide the top in with a nozzle sticking out at the one corner. I want to buy the beers. <laughs> the beer is waiting for me. As soon as I'm done I'm gonna have that cold beer. Oh, my wife's already gonna get hers. Now it's a lot longer than the chair, so you actually fold it in half. Stick it in the bottom pocket of the folding camp chair. And that will become the bottom of the seat and it makes a double thickness for underneath your butt. There's a middle strap to go across the middle. It keeps it all kind of folded in together. On each side, it's got uh, these nice thick straps and buckles. Simply fold it up to a 90 degree angle and buckle it on each side. You now have a chair with a seat back. That's what I consider my luxury item. A, usually you got to bring the seat back up inside at 90 degrees, like 85 or 80 degrees. You pull the straps on each side, slide back in, and you can lean back. Back support. Beautiful. Ah, time for that beer. Kick off my shoes. And sit back. Mm, don't mind the spill beer. So I'm going to end up tucking it in underneath the tent. And she's got a camp chair too. I mean, we did di just get set up in time when a light sprinkle came through. Garbage bag to our right, right there. The sun hat hanging there in the front. Ah, feels good. Kayaks right off to my left behind me, where the uh, mid hatch available. There's the cooler right behind us. This is camping. This is great. 
nobody else there. Jewel Key, Everglades National Park. Looking back towards the mainland to the right, and off to the Gulf to the left. Hope you enjoyed this film. Thanks for your watching.